So you also said that um, going to like a Catholic all girls school that you don't think that you would be where you are today, like working in the adult industry if it wasn't for that, right? Like, what do you I think mean by it's that? Really unlikely. Okay, so why is that? <sighs> well, like I said, they were, it was very traditional, mm-hmm. and the way they talked about you know sex being a very like I had already had sex at this point. Mm -hmm. and no matter what, I was going to go to hell. No matter what, no man was ever going to love me. So I think it actually— You can't, like, repent for that stuff? mm, Not according to my my first-year religion class teacher. the point of, like, Jesus? I don't think it is for Catholics. I think it is for Christians. I thought, like, you went to, you you know, the little booth, and you tell them that you were bad, and then you, like, count some beads, and then you're good. (laughs) Right, but then the whole thing is, like, well, you're not actually repenting if you— don't change your ways. If you do it again, it doesn't. That's okay, the yeah, thing. That, uh, yeah, I guess like, that makes sense. You can make a, a mistake and then go to confession, but then you got to not do it again. Right. <laughs> that whole point. That whole like you actually actually have to mean it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shucks. So, actually, I remember it was probably I don't know, maybe two years ago where I had this like big realization. So that class where that teacher made me feel like, oh, no man's ever gonna love me because I'm a slut. Mm-hmm. Just. It really sunk into my subconscious brain. Mm -hmm. So I'd already decided, you know, well, this guy's telling me I'm worthless and this is like the whole outlook of the school. So like I must be worthless and there's just something I'm not like getting about it. Mm -hmm. It didn't feel right, but our brains, you know, the more times you hear something that's repeated, we start to believe it. That's why if there's a song, like a popular song, this is just a tidbit for anybody listening. Is it a Taylor Swift song? It could be any song, (laughs) any song that you're like, ugh, I hate that song. And then you hear it and it kind of grows on you. It's Mm -hmm. just because it's repetition. Mm -hmm. Your brain is trained to believe something Mm -hmm. if it it hears it enough. So you hear a song you hate often enough, you're going to end up liking it. Mm -hmm. So same thing. One could say the same thing about politics. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yep. Because I had this belief, I think what ended up happening when I was thinking about starting porn was, oh, well, this this subconscious limiting belief of, you know, well, I'm a slut anyway. No man's going to love me anyway. Why would it matter if I started working in this industry? Because... I'm already damp. Like this is all. I'm already damaged. How much worse could it be? So then it also, you know, we've got this like self fulfilling prophecy confirmation bias. So it was a confirmation bias for me Mm. of being like, oh look, I do porn. I am a slut. I Mm -hmm. am worthless, and just really, it really reinforced some of my like negative self beliefs for a really long time. Mm -hmm. And now I'm working on all those things. But I think without that class, I might not have felt that way Mm -hmm. and not had that in the back of my mind so that when I was considering it, I wasn't looking for something that confirmed that belief about myself. Right. So now that you're in porn and you've been working in it for like 10 years, do you still feel like those, like, has it, has it worsened that feeling about yourself or has, has it changed it? It's changed it so much. I, I now believe I am worth so much more. And I, yes, this industry has taught me that, but also like, my recent separation from my husband has taught me that. I think it's really funny because it doesn't matter if you are sleeping with people for free or sleeping with people for money, you're a slut. So I'm like, I might as well get paid for it if they're calling me one anyway. And then in doing that, I actually, in doing that, in having a lot of interactions with people online, and then therefore just having interactions with more people than the average person would have, I feel like I learned what kind of treatment I was willing to accept from people Mm -hmm. and those that devalued me. Like you have to, I don't know, I didn't have a very thick skin when I got in, Mm -hmm. but it helped me gain that thick skin. And as I gained a thicker skin, it was easier to go, no, actually they're wrong. Like they don't know me. They're projecting whatever misogynistic beliefs they have about women and women who do this job onto me. This isn't actually about me. Mm-hmm. I actually am worth something, whether or not a stranger on the internet says so. No, you're absolutely right. And it's interesting too, and I don't know, this kind of just occurred to me because, you know, working in the adult industry, 
you're obviously like having, you know, a lot of sex, right? You're having sex for people to like see and consume and for you to monetize. So maybe on one end, there is the stranger on the internet saying negative things about you and, you know, who you are as a person. But there's also like this wonderful community that is the adult industry where you're also like surrounded by people who are doing the same thing as you and who love and embrace you and celebrate you yeah. for being that person. Because I was thinking about like, when you're just going out there and being a slut just to be a slut, like I was in college, there wasn't like a support group. A support group. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's like poor. It's a support group for sluts. Literally. Yes. I, and I've always said that. I was like, actually, because people are like, oh, how, how do you feel about working in the porn? I'm like, I love it. It's the best thing I've ever done for myself. I've never met a group of more accepting and tolerant people mm -hmm. where I actually feel safe being myself. And I think that's something a lot of people in this world can't say because they don't go out and find their support group. Yeah. I think because we are trained to dislike who we are at our core because mm -hmm. it doesn't fit in. It's not normal. It's, you know, mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't seek therapy. So also, you and know, also feel like better about the those world things. in general sells us the idea that like we constantly need to improve and change ourselves because that's how you sell people shit, like literally sell people stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. Capitalism. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so because we're trained not to find people that are like us. Right. Uh, because we, everybody, not everybody, a lot of people try to mold themselves into something that is palatable mm -hmm. to the the bigger society and they reject parts of themselves and they'll like bury it deep down mm -hmm. and I think I did a lot of that growing up because of my toxic family life mm -hmm. and I knew I wanted to get out of that and I think coming to porn was a way for me to find my support group where I was like no no I'm I really want to seek out people that are more like me because I've felt like the black sheep. I've felt like the outsider for so long and I don't want to feel that way anymore. Yeah.